Hello and welcome back to Take Refuge 3D. Now, I did a little quick tip video the other day featuring this um, uh, featuring this car seat and somebody mentioned in the comments that um, they would like um, to see um, if... Um, how, how to actually make a car seat so I thought let's do one I've got some um, uh, I got some reference here so we'll just make that smaller and I don't think it'll be exactly like what we see on the screen but I've got some other references here um, I kind of base the other one off this I think to some degree or these and um, it would be really good to just I don't know maybe make something um, a little bit more detailed I've got a scene that I want to make where I've got two different car seats that I want to make so I'll just keep this reference on the screen here um, I'll just quickly put on uh, screencast keys if I can find them and we'll get into it uh, where is it It'll be in here. Let's go. That should be working. Screencast keys. There we go. And we'll put the reference up here. And let's just save this and start a new file. Okay, this one's a little bit more complicated in its shape. Um, but I think we should be able to make something. This will be a bit more surfacing, something like that. Welcome to uh, whoever's just joined. Let me know if the sound is okay. I hope you can hear me. Sometimes I have problems with OBS and hopefully the sound is not too quiet. So let's have a let's have a go at this let's delete the cube and yeah I do want to make something a bit more like this kind of shape um, for my next one so let's see what we can do alrighty um, let's just start pulling out some lines. Actually, I want to go back a step and Actually, for the sake of this stream, I want to focus on surfacing. So we'll just keep it a little bit more simple and a little bit more symmetrical. And we'll just mirror that. And let's just get our dimensions tool and just make sure that we are... Oh, not our dimensions tool, our measure tool. one point yeah let's make that a lot smaller okay so that's about a meter let's just drag that down join these together mirror them welcome everybody who's joining thank you for joining how is everybody today? How how are you all going? Okay. Uh, <coughs> uh, 
always a bit slow to start but we'll get into it okay so let's join these together and let's just pull this apart like that let's not worry too much about proportions right now just general shapes and we really want to work this bring this in a bit bring this down and that looks okay for the base um, let's start to actually let's start with our shape again and let's didn't really think about how I was going to start this um, okay so we got roughly this shape so it's about 80 centimeters long By about 50 centimeters wide give or take and let's subdivide this and again and let's just start to give these some corners like that okay and then hopefully I see that gives us a bit of a problem there um, how am I going to do this let's not do that to begin with and let's just give a slight bevel to these to bring this down slow start I know but we'll get there we just need to get a little bit methodical to begin with and I want this to be these two at the back to be maybe a little bit more curved okay so we've got that like that and now we've got these two puffy bits on here and it comes down a little bit at the front so let's see how we can do that this might take a couple of tries okay get rid of those two and will it let me bring this down further no what about all three of these so you've got to find out where the limitations are and we'll crack on with it um, thanks to everybody who's joined and is watching okay we're starting with this kind of seat part here and we want this let's start with this puff in the middle so we just want to select these edges here shift D okay and actually we'll make it a bit more like this so select these four edges here and there's going to be a lot of uh, repeated techniques in this so now we've got this curve 
and we can shift S a couple times and we just want to take these corners off like that okay so what we've got here is this funny shape and we want to split a curve here here or I've got a shortcut okay and we're gonna let's just isolate this to make sure that we are only working on this hmm actually let's go back a couple of steps and isolate it now and we just want to add to these midpoints a uh, vertex okay then we can shift s this a couple of times and you can see we've got our control points okay all the way around and four vertexes in the middle so now we can just pull this up and you'll see that uh, we've got these separating lines and then we just want to champ for this ever so slightly and control X and we want a G1 there now that might be a little bit high so we'll get rid of this curve select this as our G press S and V and scale hang on select the whole object actually uh, S and V and just select the bottom center and we just want to bring this down a little bit like that okay so unisolated we got the front of our guy here I'm not entirely sure that's how I want it but let's let's work with it okay so we can bring this um, We'll make this a construction plane and we'll bring the whole object down on that okay so here we go we're starting to get a shape okay and we'll just leave that as a separate object for now and let's see how we can work with this edges so I think I want to offset this actually let's add a loop cut in here and we just want to do something very similar again okay so we've got our funny shape let's see where our vertexes are and let's just isolate that hang on I want to offset it Thanks for everybody who joined. Whereabouts is everybody? What's the time where you are? Now it's getting late here in Australia. And we just want to see where our vertexes are. And all going well, this is going to make a big fat mess. Okay. Hmm. We need to thicken this sheet and it should Okay, we've got a vertex there, there, we need one here and we need one here 
Why is that not working? Uh, let's subdivide a couple of times. Let's just curve these off and see if that will give us a is this the vertex. Yeah, that gives us something to work with. It's all very hacky. Let's get rid of the sheet down below. Now, if we get rid of this face, that did not do what I wanted it to do. So let's have a look here. Can I get rid of that fillet? Hmm. Let's have a look here. What's what can we do? Uh, RED is sort of redundant to apology. Okay, we got this part of the seat and line Let's extrude this up as a new body Just playing around, finding my feet, seeing where we want to go next. Might just hide this for now. Get rid of our temporary plane and add some more loop cuts. Okay. Slowly starting to get somewhere. I feel like it doesn't have as much of an angle as that other one, but that's okay. Okay, I'm going to try this again. Subdivide a couple times. Subdivide again and again. Just get these very faint corners. And have I got a vertex in the middle here? No. But I do have a vertex here. Let's trim that out. Hmm. And let's put a bridge curve in there. Hmm. 
I want to isolate this. Okay, let's get a bridge curve. From there. Oh, let's go back a couple of steps and see where we're at with that. Okay. Let's take the sheet and extrude it out. Whatever the heck's going on here, we don't want. Thicken that sheet. It's not working, so let's get this guy again. It's always a little bit slow to start. So what have we got? A vertex there. Let's delete. Let's dissolve. Hmm. Okay. Let's start putting these in again. And I want to just put them in that willy nilly. Do we need all of these? No, okay, so this should work. Let's pray. No, not what I was looking for at all. So let's give these a little bevel. Okay, why can we not get that? Let's give it a nice big fat chamfer. If it will let us. Feel like try something else alrighty alrighty so let's just start with an actual curve on the surface scale it Subdivide it, give ourselves these midpoints, and subdivide it again a couple times.
maybe just bevel this one that might be what the problem is okay got our vertex 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 okay have we got four sides kind of I was really hoping for something a little bit different. Uh, let's start that again. <clears throat> I know it's a little bit slow, but I'm just trying to get what I want and it's not giving it to me. So I'm just going to try something else. Let's just get this funny shape here. Come on, baby, you can do this. Come on, baby. Are you going to be, are you going to play nice and give me something weird? There you go. And it didn't even come out faceted. Alrighty. So we'll Alt H. We'll move this to the side a little bit. We'll get rid of our curve. And I think that would look better if we put it on the other side and did something like that okay so we're going back down and we need this little area for the butt okay and I think we're just going to do the same here Thanks for joining everybody. Welcome, welcome. Nice to see everybody here. Let me know how your day is going. Whereabouts in the world are you all based? Okay, so once again doing the very same thing that we just did, except that that's way too fluffy. So we need to get a, I think, there we go. And we'll scale that up. Scale it down. Z. And bring it back down. Okay. So. I think these can scale in the way. And let's have a look at what we can do with this. Just want to give that a go. Okay, and we kind of got this. Yeah. 
area here. Alright. This one might play up. Let's just give it a go. Just isolate that sheet. Okay, let's delete the sheet and make a curve. And isolate. Why is isolate not working? Okay. Ah, uh, there we go. Numlock. Numlock, guys. Okay, where are our vertexes? Okay. We probably want one down in the middle here. One down somewhere like that, one in the middle there, and one in the middle there, and we can subdivide the curve and get rid of these funny corners. There's a bit of funny stuff going on down, it's funny business. Okay, and one up there like that. Okay, this one probably gonna be a bit weird to work with let's have a look I'm hoping that it does some funky stuff so we can fix it so that's not what I meant by funky stuff what if I try it and Get rid of like are there any other fillets. What? Hmm. Maybe fill it that again. What if we try with that? No, it has to be a. Maybe we need a big. Uh, big chamfer like that. Okay, let's try something else. Let's see what happens if we make the sheet weird. I know I'm just messing around guys, but that's promising. Yeah, let's make the sheet weird. Okay. So, first of all, let's get these funny faces out of the way. I am really just experimenting, guys. Checking the limits of what I can do. And then seeing where we can go from there. And it 
does not like that at all. But let's give this a go and see what happens. thinking about it and okay let's un let's un why why is that is that like a bug all right I think I got lucky last time but Actually, let's just make these armrests up like that. And we can just use some traditional techniques. Let's give this a little bit of shape. And I'd be remiss in my duties if I didn't try that one more time. Boom, this is what I was looking for. Okay. So, last time I was about to give up. Now we got all of these funky shapes. And what we're going to start doing is we're going to start destroying it and patching it in. So let's start with this section here. So when you get something like this, this is where we get to start to have some fun and rebuild our shape. And I was trying to get that weird shape. I didn't know how I was going to go about it. I'm not a pro or anything, but patching this stuff is so much fun. So now we got that and then we got those two and they're a little bit weird. So let's just take all of this and slowly, piece by piece, start to build this weird thing together. And then we'll eventually get something really nice. So. We're cooking with gas now, guys. If anybody knows why I had so much trouble getting to this point and how these things work, let me know. Because I'm curious. I just play around until it works, basically. Um, and have happy accidents. I know I could be more methodical and okay so we got that whole left side now I really want to see what happens if we just get these three out and it's going to go back to being like that so let's just what about these two yep we don't want that necessarily Okay, let's work on this side. I don't understand why this faceting works, but once you get it, it's really easy to get a really nice shape. Okay. And is this going to 
be a bastard. Yep. Oh, no, that's okay. Boom. Yeah. What happens when we start to move these out? Probably dumb stuff. Yep. No. No, I'm happy with that. Um, I think this should be okay. And now let's see if we can get some G2s. Probably not. Nice and smooth. Um, no. So, what about just these three? Hmm. Is that something I can work with? Let's find out. I really don't want that kind of indentation. Okay. Yep. Getting somewhere where I want to be with this shape. Thank you everybody who's joining. Um, might even show you a little bit later on uh, the beta version of the next version of Engon Pro. Uh, just working on some extra tools for helping with the texturing process. Okay, so we got this nice highlight coming around here. Now let's get this. This should all be one piece. And we should be able to get some G2s down here. That one does not want to be a G2, so it can be a G1. Can we have that as a G2? No. And this is definitely not. Okay. And let's see if we can do the same with this. Should be able to get these coming down here just to get those highlights a little bit more i think this one's going to fail it yep and this is the thing you have to trial and error these things until you get you can just slowly see this pinching is being reduced in the highlight and let's see if we can get some on this one. And see that's starting to give that a weird indentation. We do it on both sides. Okay, everything is a G1. If we make that G2. That's going to fail it. Okay, there we go. There we go. What about over here? No. What about over here? What about over here? What about over here? Okay, and over here? Here? No. It wants to be a G1. That one's okay with being a G2, so is that. So is that. So is that. Probably not this. No. I think the corner ones don't like being G2s a lot of the time. If anybody knows why that is, let me know. Whew. Keep that as a G0. But now... 
we just turn our lines off I think that's kind of okay for now it's a weird shape um, I still don't really like this this bit in here I wonder what happens if we just remove all of these actually let's bevel this or chamfer it rather just very gently in the positive and then we should be able to actually let's chamfer it as a G2 chamfer okay and we should be able to now get this all as G1 G2 G1 still got that pinching what happens if I bring a loop cut in here can I get rid of that somehow I wish I could just drag over them and what if we delete all of this oh hang on let's get a loop cut in here delete all of this get it all as a G1 loop cut that loop cut that Um, this is going to be weird if it doesn't work. Why won't it let me add a line? It probably doesn't like that. So let's do try that another way. Let's get a curve from there to there. To there. And shift I on the normal. Didn't like that either. Cannot read properties. Oh, hang on. Shift I click on the normal. Now we should have a line under there. And are they connected? Looks like they might be. So let's see what happens if we can patch this in uh, and that is far less of a doesn't want me to do it there or there doesn't mind it there shouldn't mind it on any of these except for the corner one uh, and allowed it even allowed that doesn't like that okay and that is not pinching as much as it was so let's now try for this it's gone back to pinching okay I think I'm happy with that for now except let's make all this one piece just make it nice and easy and G2 that shit right. here oh I thought I was gonna have something to work with there here we go spreading that curve out okay think we can work with that for now and why is it joined to the whole body I guess that's okay
Um, Okie dokie. So, let's just give that a little bit of that underside shape that we have there. Just getting a little bit of that in there. Maybe bring this back in a bit. Okay. And there's going to be some funny shit to deal with here, but that's okay. And over here. Okay. Let's continue to mirror this. Shift X. Okay. Right. Alt X X Q to join. I wish that the join the union was the default. Alrighty. So Let's get some GZ. Scale it in. And what we want to do is just get some details on these cushions. So uh, let's just bevel the edges of that. And what the fuck is that? Unnecessary details. Okay, shift. Uh, onto four, two. And we'll just do a rectangular array across to about there. Scroll it in. Five bits, G Z, G Z. Okay, Shift I onto the cushion only, and let's do normal and that might work actually. Let's have a look. Okay, I think it might. Okay, and. You can redo the bulging technique for these kind of cushions, but I'm just going to use fillets for now as I don't want this stream to go on all night. But you did see how I problem solved uh, one um, tricky piece. Let's just try with the tops first. These are going to be a little bit funny. Okay, there we go. And are we going to get a G2 out of it? Yep. In the positive direction. Okay. So, where does the butt go? I feel like that's the back of the seat. And we can rotate that slightly like that. Bring it in. G 
she down. Is it intersecting over there? Yes, it is. Let's just pull the unit in. We can start to... Oh, we might get a bit weird with that. Okay, and I feel like this front cushion isn't the greatest in the world. Um, but let's see if what happens if we flatten it a bit. Uh, bring it down. So we got still want that edge coming out. And let's do something similar over here. But maybe let's Okay, let's just see what we can do with this. Let's shift D it. Bring it up. Let's isolate it. Let's see where our vertex is there. Let's add another one over here. And Oh, it did not like to do that. This one's going to be a bit funky. One, two, three, four. Let's thicken that sheet and see what we're working with. This one might be a bit tricky. I think it's going to be tricky indeed. Let's just these edges if we can get the same behavior that we got before that would be bloody amazing um, just give me one second back in a minute guys just checking something out Okay, so let's see if this works. Probably not. Is there actually a face in there? Oh, it does not like that. Let's just see. I haven't actually tried to do it when it does stuff like this. Let's see what happens when we try it. Do something like this. Okay, that works nicely. Where's my curve? Nope. 
So let's just try and loft that again on a G1. And I actually liked it, except it made a little hole in here. So let's just join these together. Okay, let's get rid of this. And fill it that in. And then let's get rid of these two. And oh, so let's just go back for a second. Get rid of this and this, and just loft those across and try and use that as a guide. Yep, and we should be able to then uh, join these two, and um, one by one. Um, we need to join the fuck is going on there okay is that a face okay we should be able to four oh no we need to get rid of this little guy and all right and then there's a little bit of pinching down the bottom there but now we should be able to get rid of these two and did it bring it back? Okay. Okay, brought it back, but fuck it, it's fine. You'll never see that detail. Okay. Now. <coughs> Ooh, excuse me. Hay fever season. Alrighty. Slowly bringing that back into there. And let's just leave it separate for now. Let's get rid of that curve. Let's see if there's any uh, redundant te topology on there. Same for that. Okay, now I feel like we need this to also be because this is the front part of the seat where you lean back down. So let's just rotate this on this line slightly down okay so as we scale it all up and bring it all up hmm no back to that that's fine so we got this nice little Let's just turn our edges off. These I'm still not happy with, but uh, we'll come back to those at some point. Um, we're starting to get some kind of crazy shape going on. And let's just scale these in from there and same with this a little bit forward and let's get rid of that okay let's turn our edges back on starting to get a shape going on there now what happens if we just get rid of these two fillets and champ for that like that give these two g2s and that of a G1 right 
Uh, let's try something else. Shift D. And we'll try loft these two together. Shift D. Loft. As a G2. No, it does not like it. That's okay. Um, so this is the back of the seat. And um, we're doing okay. Thanks everybody for joining. Say hello in the chat if you want to. And um, let me know what you think. I want to work on this again right now. It's just this one here. I think I went a bit crazy on it. Yeah, let's work with this. This is what I like. This is fun. Okay, now let's start with the corner. One by one. And start to get those edges built up. G1. Okay. I just don't want that wonky top. I don't want it to look wonky. And I think it was because I pressed G2 on some of those edges. Let's get this whole area patched in as a G1. Tangent. Okay. That is looking far less wonky already. Okay, there we go, and then I don't know if I'm going to be able to get it to go all the way across, but we'll give it a red hot go. Alrighty, let's just turn our edges off. Yeah, that's already looking a bit better, to be honest. Um, I wonder if we can start to Yeah. Oh, look at this mess down here. Can I just select a bunch of those? Deselect some of those. Select a bunch of those. Select all of these and that. And deselect these. And let's go with this. Okay. And then that's going to have a funny little edge. So let's... Okay, this is starting to look way better than it did before. Let's select all of these. Oh, face mode. Let's select all of these. Select all of these. And that one. And... Okay, and then let's... Didn't like that. No, nope. back a step. Okay, that's fine. Now let's try and get this corner. No, I think that's gonna. But let's compare the two side by side, and that is a lot smoother than the other one. This is still not great, but fuck it. I think we'll just get rid of this. Well, we just mirror the whole thing across. 
Union. There we go. We're starting to get somewhere with this. And it is starting to look quite fun, to be honest. Thanks, everybody, for joining. I know some of you have been around here since the beginning, so that's always good news. Okay, so dealing with this front part, let's have a look at the front part of this. Um, let's just dissolve these fillets. And then let's dissolve this face. Okay. And these are above ground. So let's bring those down. And let's give this a I just don't think that's the one. This is. Um. Oh, let's. Let's just roll with the punches. Okay. Uh, and the piping kind of comes around, doesn't it? So it's kind of like this shape. What we might do It's even just okay these are too big and what we might do is just actually cut the edge out cut the side off um, somehow over here cut that okay there's all that let's just give it a mirror shift x q alrighty and then what happens if we try and doesn't like that is this gonna no nope. I want to repatch that in whoa actually yeah And then what happens if we do both? Nothing. Oh, that's something that we could. Oh, uh, yep. Let's get rid of this as well. And off that down to there. Okay off that down to there off that. Uh, this might be something that might work let's have a look off that down to there off that down oh. off that down to there 
Yep. Then join these two together. Uh, yep, we're kind of getting somewhere. This is probably not going to play nice, but let's start to join these together and then we can maybe patch this stuff. G1. It's a bit bulbous, but still kind of cool. But what happens if we add a segment in here and a segment in here? Didn't like that. There we go. What are these interior? Oh, that's not interior faces. So let's just get rid of those segments for a second. Go into one mode. off that down like that and let's just add another segment in here and one here didn't register the first one off that down to there just like add another segment here Okay, one there. What we want to do is so this is like sort of just surfacing, guys. It's I don't know if um, we'll join that together, patch that on a G1, patch that on a G1. And it is giving it a funny shape there, but that just might be a happy accident by the looks of things. However, if we get rid of these, oh, we need to patch this guy here. Oh. And it doesn't like that. So, what we're going to do is we see that that's a whole line, and we've got three lines down here so we're gonna make three over here and we can now loft that we should be able to loft that and join it here nope so we're gonna have to join these two together patch that hole that's not going to like being a G1, I don't think. However, we'll just leave that as a G1. Okay. Don't know if that's great for now, but we can work on that later can always come back later so were we able to get rid of it came back as a funny shape again however I kind of like it okay so let's see if we can then just give this a bit more of a smoother outcome as well do not like that let's leave that as is on its lofted side and let's see what this looks like mirrored uh, okay we are getting some kind of wacky car seat scenario going on here let's just bevel these in like that oh. now for the project I am actually uh, I know I got an AI to generate this but the concept that I'm doing for these two um, these two objects is they're going to be old uh, 
disheveled car seats that have been removed and stuck on milk crates. So I just open up Blender and we could have a look at uh, the last one that I made quickly. Oh. We just go into material mode. And that will be sitting on top of a milk crate. We can uh, So there you have it, it's kind of a, that was all done in plasticity. The texturing's not quite uh, complete yet, but um, looks quite nice with an HDRI and a shadow catcher. Anyway, back to plasticity. All right, let's now, I feel like can we just, this is what we were having a problem with before, can we just get this to just, oh, okay, why is it doing that? Can we get this to play nice? Yes. And I think that a back of that seat like that is a perfect place for some kind of um, is that the back of the seat sticking out. Okay, perfect place for some kind of mechanism. W tab and mm. okay, that'll do for now at that it's in rounded let's just do something a little bit more manufactured looking with these edges here we've got these in here and they can also have a chamfer okay cool looking a little bit sci-fi why would you prefer poly modeling for this kind of model because I feel like um, I feel like this kind of stuff um, I mean, they've both got their merits, but I feel like this kind of stuff, um, these kind of shapes can be a little bit uh, tricky to make in poly modeling quickly, uh, which is why I use this. And then I obviously move it off to, over to Blender and convert it to polys later, but I feel like this is uh, a lot quicker to do these kind of surfaces yeah that's true i agree that it's kind of easier um to begin with um but i also think that it's um like for example if i wanted to do hang on, let's if i wanted to do this and poly modeling If I wanted to do this in poly modeling, let's 
see, let's just bring them all in a little bit. And I would have a lot of problems. I wanted to do something like this in poly modeling and add this kind of detail. Sometimes you got to do one at a time. These kind of details really quickly in poly modeling, those kind of Boolean operations, it's just going to be a pain for me. Um, so that's why I like using plasticity. Um, I feel like poly modeling, if I tried to do something like that, I'd spend ages trying to set up the curve to get the array. Once I hit the Boolean, um, it wouldn't operate. Where with this, I can just um, take it straight into Blender. Oh. Delete my default scene. Connect it. Refresh it. You can see I've got tries here. I can refacet it as n-gons. Refacet. it. Okay, changes the surface, but you can put you can play with the tolerance and stuff like that. Refacet. it. Get a bit more detail out of it. Working with n-gons. Just delete these groups. And then I can go to the plugin that I made. Um, and working on the beta version here, I might just need to bring up the code for the uh, new version. Um, Where are we? Let's bring up the scripting. Um. Hit play. And then over here I've got this thing and just took the wireframe on, got all of our ngons, hit create low poly and got the low poly. No problems. So I feel like that is for me a good workflow. And then I can these are new, new features. They're not on the release yet, but I'll make sure that I've got them in the release for the uh, Blender Market sale. I can just start to add uh, vertex colors. Etc. Anyway, I feel like I feel like it's the best of both both worlds for me. Anyway, um, I, I strictly use the polygon software and sculpting software until I found plasticity. Anyway, let's move on with this, and let's try and get the backside uh, up and running. I'll just have a drink of water. Nice and cold. I notice your name is Autumn Wind. I wish we had a bit of Autumn Wind. It's quite warm where I am at the moment. So that's, uh, it is what it is. What's the time? 12 o'clock, midnight, the witching hour. Let's try and get this, uh, Yeah, uh, I've never really used Fusion 360. I think I gave it a go when a friend... Uh... Yeah, I agree. Uh, I use... Mostly I use Blender and I use a little bit of Plasticity. 
Uh, I mostly talk about plasticity on my channel because Blender is kind of oversaturated with uh, content creators. So for a small creator like me, it's hard to get any traction. Um, so I do a lot of plasticity content, but I use a lot of Blender and ZBrush. Those are my those are my uh, softwares of choice. 2 p.m. where you are. 2 p.m. So I'm guessing you're. Europe you're in Europe or the UK no it can't be the UK the UK will be about lunchtime so I'm guessing continental Europe let's just try and get a shape here and I think we should separate these out Poland Dobra, dobra, dobra. I know some more words in Polish, but I won't say them on my stream because I might get banned. I had a lovely time when I went to Warsaw. Some years ago. Drob, dobrze, dobrze, <laughs> dobrze. Vasharva. I can't, it's, yeah, I'm, I'm not going to try and say Polish words anymore. I will embarrass myself. How is the, uh, the winter time treating you in Poland? Okay, how are we going to do this? We're going to have this lean back a little bit. Two times in Warsaw. I was only there, oh, actually I've been there two times as well, but one time I spent a bit more time and I stayed with a guy, um, uh, a cool guy um, and he kind of lived on a, a, a house, what we'd call a housing estate or a commission flat you know like a government housing and um, with his mum and uh, he took me to all the places and all the old milk bars and all of this kind of stuff so it was really cool to get that experience so uh, I appreciate having had a a lovely local to show me around. Early spring. I used to live in Scotland and um, I was actually born in Scotland and um, early spring for me is when the, uh, the, the, the white flowers, the snowdrops, start to melt the snow in that context. Early spring here is just not as hot in Australia. Um, now I want to get these, I don't think I'm going to get those shapes at all. But what we might try to do just before we move on to this is, oh, hang on, that's meant to be the back over there. So let's put that over there. Yeah, that looks more like it. Um, I think this detail here is something you'll never see but you never know I sell a lot of these assets and sometimes um, selling an asset putting detail in funny places is uh quite important I would say so um, just for reference let's get a uh, we'll just look at my profile quickly um, on Sketchfab
This was actually a fun little plasticity project. Uh, making a vending machine. It was pretty simple. But I was pretty happy with uh, actually, um, maybe making it for sale, but I think, uh, it's for a project. So often when I do a project, um, unless it's like for a customer, um, I will, uh, put certain assets that I make for the project up online for sale. Um, you know, a lot of personal projects, but I was quite happy with this. I don't know if you can see down here. Um, it's not very high texture, but this was a detail in plasticity and getting the bake for it. If we just look at the AO map, it just came out perfect. I was so happy with that when it uh, came out. That was that that bake took a little bit of effort. I had to use Marmoset and like custom paint all these cracks, but that was pretty cool. But the reason I opened Sketchfab was to come down to this guy. Now this is probably um, my biggest selling one is probably this laptop. It's not that exciting. Um, but this is probably my biggest selling uh, model of all time. I did it. This was for a project I did some years ago. But for whatever reason, it's a real uh, stupid looking uh cyberpunk gamer laptop it's super low res um but this one sells a lot but this guy here um has actually been bought by two separate game companies um and i won't say who but i'm keeping a keeping an eye out for um if it shows up in a game but um i feel like the reason that this one does well um is because i focused on making details that you wouldn't necessarily see like i mean it's like stretch textures and everything it's not like the best texturing job but um this was done in blender but i feel like because i you know, I use ZBrush to um, sculpt some of the details in, and then I use trim sheets, so the texture is quite light. Um, but wherever you look, if you scrutinize it closely, there's some details and some chaos, and it's actually only got two textures. It's just this one uh, wooden trim sheet, Oh, actually, I think it's got three textures. Uh, the wooden trim sheet, a uh, wooden trim sheet, a metal trim sheet, and one that's like a combo of both with this uh, wheel as well. So, if we look at the um, base color, you can see it's pretty pretty simple. Um, but if we look at the matte cap plus surface, I feel like I did this one, and this is sold like I don't know, ten copies or something. So, um, it's pretty good. Um, so I feel like my whole point of that was, um, sometimes if you're making something for sale or you think that it might go on sale, even if you think this detail won't show up in your render, sometimes you can, um, sometimes you can just add them anyway, if it doesn't take that much time, because um, the person might be buying it for a video game and in the video game they might you might see the back of the object so you've kind of got to choose to some degree where you add details and where you do not um, but let's find my reference again might just make it a bit bigger Hi there, Killahook or Chillahook or Chillahooke, however you pronounce your name. And welcome. Alrighty. So, 
I don't think I'm going to be able to ca be capable of making this kind of detail. But let's just block it out. Let's just block something out. Hmm. That's good to hear, and you're welcome, and um, please do aim for being your best self. Never aim to be your worst self. I can attest to that. Let's scale this down. And hang on. Okay, that's not what I want to do. Let's just dissolve these. Maybe if I go into this mode. Well, that's quite big, isn't it? So let's scale this. From down here. that looks more contextually where we want to be. Now let's just dissolve these loops and just block out our basic shape. Okay. Woo. Oh yeah, yeah. I'm just thinking about time right now. I'll probably come back to it and, and try uh, uh, to do something better, but I think you might be right. Actually, let's just try for the middle part and then take it from there. And I might try and follow your advice. Okay. And maybe if I can, how do, how do you flip this again? Mm. can't remember how to do that no can't remember how to do that so let's just try for this middle bit Okay. Uh, I think that's too far. And Let's lose that. And this. And they're all green. That one's not. this across here like that okay we have a curve let's join it 
accept mirror x and loft okay that does start to look more like the shape that we want let's get rid of these curves and make that a solid okay so now we have a curve up here and I think we can we can probably Hey Fat Sixty Four, you guys. I guess this is the time when all the Europeans are uh, um, waking up, and well, not waking up, but online on a Saturday. Okay, let's just try. I actually think that might be one. And that's, those are all roughly the same size. And let's try this. Um, Okay. No, it's my second, but I'm trying to be a little bit more. Um, I'm trying to be a little bit more complicated than my first. So, um, new window. Where's the other one? Uh, this one. This is my first one, a bit more simple. Um, I was quite happy with this uh, area for the legs. I feel like because I'm trying to make older chairs, I feel like I'm going to have to bring them into ZBrush and mess around with the topology at some point. But um, this one is a bit more simple and then uh, if we go to Blender again, um, I did do a rough job of texturing it as well. Um, as you can see here. Yeah, so it's not really meant to be um, realistic. It's uh, actually for a scene I'm doing in UE4 that's going to be a little bit stylized so um, it doesn't need to be crazy or oh, UE5 rather um, so it's just for a, like a personal project that I'm working on and they're going to be um, seats on a milk crate around a fire um, that's part of the scene anyway so um, let's get rid of this one just make sure I've got the other one on and we better save the other one because I haven't saved it yet um, so we'll call this car seat 2 ok now let's get the scale of this right before we start making uh, S V and we'll go Yes, and let's bring that in a little bit. Okay, does that look about right? For now, we can edit it again later. So let's try. Where's that curve? I need to get rid of that. Let's try this, and then we might need to do a curve array. So Shift D, and let's just isolate it. 
And let's look at our points. And let's just add some vertexes. And subdiv subdivide a couple of times. I don't want to turn into a curve. Mm, oh F. Oh. Alt F. And let's just thicken that out. Fingers crossed this works. Take this into the negative. And yes. Okay, so then we want to get rid of that curve, take ourselves out of isolation, and put ourselves back into isolation. Scale this down on this here and take ourselves out of isolation and we can make a curve out of this shift D and do a curve array along here Something like that. Thank you, Fat64. And I feel like maybe we can actually scale this. Let's take it into isolation. Scale V on there. Scale that up a little bit. And is it gonna make let me make a construction plan out of that? I don't like how close that is to the oh, why have I got two? Okay. Okay. Get rid of that. And Bring that in there, and let's curve array that again. Scale. Nope. One. Twist, nope. I think that's fine. I think that is fine. And I think we can start to just, I'm just gonna bull that now. I'm gonna commit to it. Okay, let's just have a little look how our surface looks without any edges. And I still, oh no, because we got we want the headrest as well. Now, I do want to do the same thing for just up here. So we can, this one's going to be a little bit more tricky. And I don't know if it will work or not, but let's give it a go. We need to get rid of these vertices down here. And this one can be more of a headrest. If it's going to work. This is the thing about plasticity is that you never know if it's going to work until you try it and then you've got to find another way if it doesn't work. 
Okay, let's just thicken that sheet out. And I feel like this one's going to need a little bit of work. Into the negative. Ooh, actually, that kind of works out, doesn't it? I feel like it works out quite a lot. Let's unisolate it. Okay, I feel like we can, well that doesn't have a center point, or does it? Nope. Is it going to let me make a construction plan out of that? Alright, that's kind of fun. Um, let's do a headrest and then we'll work on these side pieces which I'm terrified of actually doing. And I don't know if I'm going to bother with that today, but we'll get the gist of it going. I still feel like that's not... Maybe this one needs to be scaled in. Let's... Let's scale that in. There we go. All right. And then we need to scale it down a bit. We've still got our weird underside here. Actually, let's just, while I'm at it, see what happens if I patch this hole. Boom. Okay. Gave me an extra thing I Okay. Starting to get our weird shape. This one's maybe a little bit too fancy for my project, but it is just for the stream, to be honest. And how's the weather in uh, Sweden? Is there still snow, or is it... Hmm. Let's do the headrest, like I said I was going to do. Okay, I feel like this one's relatively easy. Ah, yep. I remember icy roads very well. Black ice, even. Um... Okay, actually, yeah, well, tomorrow it's going to be 37 degrees C where I am, and I don't want to go out in that either. Um, uh, 
I just really don't. I want to stay inside the, the cool environment. And let's bring that back. <laughs> oh, listen, um, my AC in my apartment did not work for the first part of summer and I worked from home and it was getting very, uh, very, very, very hot inside because it's stuffy and the it's in an apartment and the windows are from the floor to the ceiling, so the... Um, the uh the ac like i said was not working and um it was uncomfortable we'll just say that much okay so this looks headrest ish okay let's get rid of that curve Okay, and let's try and make it a bit bulgier than before. I know I keep using this technique. However, it is a good one. Uh, I live in Melbourne, Australia, so it's not always, it's not, it's not the hottest part of Australia, that's for sure. Um, However, it can be can be quite hot when it wants to be. Um, how am I going to do this? Let's just We were supposed to be going into a hot summer, but it hasn't so far been that hot. And um, frankly, I'm happy about it. Okay. Uh, the only part is this side, which I don't know how I'm going to approach just yet. But maybe I will use... Yeah, look, uh, Australia is a, uh, a different kind of place. So there's a small... Oh, a not a very tall mountain range that stretches from the top of the east coast and it comes right the way down to where we are in Victoria it's called the Great Dividing Range and it kind of separates the green part of Australia from the from the red part and what happens is if there's a lot of rain the rain will breach over to the uh, to the other side and it will get very green um, however um, that means that there's a lot of growth and then when the heat comes back and the summer comes back um, it can be quite uh, it can be quite uh, problematic for fires um, but that's just part of the ecosystem here. Fires are just part of life. I'm not from Australia originally. I only learned all of this stuff in the last 10 years. And um, um, 
Yeah, let's use this, extrude it out as a new body. And scale it out from somewhere like there. Okay. And we can make a curve like that. Hmm. It's not quite like what it is in the picture, which is looks far more luxurious and comfortable. Yeah, where I, I grew up in New Zealand and there's there's fires there as well, but um not on the scale that there is um, here in 2019, shortly before COVID, there was a um, a big big fires that sort of spread across all of Queensland, uh, Victoria, and New South Wales, and um, they were quite horrific, to be honest, and. Um, And uh, the smoke was, um, you couldn't even see like, you know, a few hundred meters. Um, and and uh, something called uh, a type of weather event happened where uh, it's called pyrocumulus, as in a thundercloud, but the thundercloud was created by the smoke, um, which is extremely rare let's just have a look at this on either side and that still needs to be kind of all of this needs to be fatter I think all right this is needs to be skinnier I think Just eyeballing stuff doesn't always uh, end up in good results. Mm, however, I still think yeah, it's not too bad. I think it's too fancy for the one that I want on my project. The reason I'm doing this live stream is somebody I did a quick tip video the other day and um, somebody said they would like to see how I made the I was just using the uh, other seat as an example and somebody would like to see how I made a seat so I kind of did this tutorial I think we can scale this up actually yeah let, let's try and get some a little bit more of this crazy crazy shapes in here so um, let's maybe, how does it go in like that? So, let's, what happens if I get rid of these? Okay. That's a bit funny, a bit weird. But, what if I... something like this and got like a curve in here let's just get rid of this for a second mm, spline curve something like that Something like that, and then let's just get these two 
lost them together. Use that. Use that. Uh, no. I need this whole curve here as well to. Okay. And let's make this a little bit more crazy. Does that go too far in? And then this one should come further out. Because it's kind of like a rest for the arm. And this one can go down. This one can go up. And lost those. That's no, too weird. Let's go back a few steps. Okay. Hmm. We need to make that into a curve as well. Oh, I know what I'm doing wrong. Loft. Oh. Loft. Start with this. Into this. Nope. Is it not touching? Okay, it doesn't like that anymore. Let's go back a few steps. Okay. I'm just going to stick with this. Shifting two together. It doesn't like that anymore. Let's go back to when we had it like that and make this one come out like this. Okay, this should. Doing the same thing again. Okay. So. Let's get rid of these. And this. Okay. Loft. Use that. Okay. Let's four and just join that together. Let's put an edge loop in here. And see if we can patch that in. And get rid of these curves does not like that Okay, so what is going on here? Let's lost that down to there. Let's see if I can use these. Doesn't like it.
Okay. Sometimes you just have to play around until something looks good. That's starting to look good. I think it's because I don't have any. Hang on. I think what we're going to do. if we can sometimes you just have so much trouble I think what we need to do is just patch this whole area Okay, all I'm trying to do is find some unique shapes and there we go and then that doesn't like that at all but now that we've beveled that other edge we might be able to that's more like it it's not going to like all of them it's probably not going to like this one or those ones on the corners oh. there we go and I think The scale's still off on something. Um, I think it's this. And I think we need more details. Hmm. I shouldn't have connected those. Um, what are we going to do? Let's put some details on here. Is it going to let me patch that in? or not and it's not going to make it a cushion but that's uh, that's okay oh that for whatever reason is making the computer hum uh, and that did not work however that's reasonably smooth Let's just take this into the positive, if it will allow us. Doesn't like it. Hmm. Uh, 
have kids. Oh, we don't need to deal with that right now. What I was coming here to do was to put some do what we did before. And because it's slightly rounded, well, this is not very good, is it? Maybe just offsetting them all. doesn't like offsetting those actually what if oh that's not like that okay that works let's do the same down here and if these funny little edges down here that are causing me problems so hopefully there we go I need a better graphics card along normal and fingers crossed so here's one good trick from blender that works in plasticity alt shift click oh sorry alt control click and then if you want to add to the selection as normal hold shift and we can do this all the way along. <laughs> That's actually uh, not a bad idea. Um, I usually just, uh, I don't know if you've encountered this, but I get a black screen. Um, bring this into the positive. Alrighty, so these are actually quite odd little, I'm wondering, actually, if I do this and then chamfer it, does it give me that? No, it does not. So. These are quite funny, but let's see what happens when we just do a, a patch on its own. No, that is not good. We'll go back to where we were. And I think I'm just going to give this a little bit of a fillet, if it will allow me to, because these are oddly shaped. Yep, let's make it caudal. Allow me. Okay. Hmm. Feel like there's too much space at the front. Uh, I know what we'll do. Shift E, G, scale, G, G, and we can do an array. Just 
to there. Scan the X. Scroll it in. Mm. Select. Deselect that one. Mirror those. And G up on the Z. Oh. Select all of them. Minus that and that. G up on the Z. Shift I. Select the object. How does that look like? We'll go normal. And hopefully it gives us a little bit. Oh no. Vector. Normal. Why is it doing that? Why is it saying that the shape is the wrong so Okay, we'll do vector. Hide occlusion. Um, yep, that's okay. Accept that. Delete our curves. Oh. Where's the... Oh, it's up there. Alright, now. Before we do this, we probably want to patch these in okay um, shift X well just let me patch the holes on the object no. I guess we're just going to have to deal with it as it is. No, that's still not good. Um, I think I know what I'm going to do. Select all these edge loops. Probably didn't need to even make curves out of them. Probably doing. Let's go back to when I all had. Okay. And just like rotate them all along there. G. Let's see if that normal direction thing works now. Yes. Still got the problem to solve of if it'll let me extrude these all the way up. Oh yep, here we go. This is nice. This one... might behave... might give us a little bulge. If we're lucky. No. We'll leave it as is and we will just fill it all of these just to give a little bit of extra detail at the front and 
Well, let us fill at the bottoms as well. Actually, it might let us do quite a lot. And then maybe, if we are lucky, and it'll let us actually select an edge loop, which it won't. We might be able to get a nice does not like that. Anyway, let's have a look at it from a distance. Okay, and here's a cool little tip. Um, I haven't encountered this problem, but let's say let's say you have a a hole in your mesh and you can't find it for the life of you. You've been looking around, it's a tiny little hole, you can't see it, you've got a complicated mesh, and it's saying it's a sheet, and you go to patch the hole. In this case it worked, but sometimes it will not work. Uh, you can go over to Blender, you go to Plasticity, connect it, connect it, only visible, Okay, so you've got your mesh down here. Go into, and a bit easier if you refacet it as a angon. Okay, go into vertex mode. Okay, you've got no idea where your hole is, so you can go select by trait, uh, non-manifold. Oh, no, go into, make sure that nothing's selected. Select by trait, uh, non-manifold, and then you can find your hole, probably patch it in um, Blender, but you'll notice it fucks up the split normals. So um, if we go down to, where are we? Uh, these ones so we've done it there but you can see that it does not have the right angle so then you go back into we'll turn our normals back off now you know where the hole is you can go back find the hole Patch it. If it'll let you do a G1. No. And then you can go um, back into Blender and refresh it. And there you've got it. And you open that up and you can see uh, even if you refacet it as an end gone and turn your normals back on, so let's just select that face. They're working properly, and you're not getting these weird things, and you've got sharp edges where they should be sharp, and, and so forth. So, that's it. Um, look, I might leave the stream there for tonight. Um, Thanks everybody for joining and yeah, Blender Bridge is good for using the geometry. Um, it's fine. Um, so I do find that in some cases the OBJ, oh, how did these, what? Oh, it's because I scaled it. Um, I do find in some cases the um, the, the geometry is no good uh, well no it is but it um, it's something to do with Blender um, 
I think it was more like in Blender 3. Like, I haven't noticed it much lately. I think it's been, it was like a bug. Um, so look at all, look at all our angons and what they look like. Um, but sometimes I would notice that when we do, like, if we refacet this as triangles, you can see you get a bit of a smoother surface. Um, but I would often just, um, you know, use my angon plugin to um, I need to put that script back in there. Where is it? Because uh, I don't have all of the new features active at the moment. Um, so if I would uh, create my low, uh, am I in Angon mode? Uh, sums Angon sums tries. Oh no, because I did tries. So um, if I refacet that, um, then I get a little bit of lost detail. And then if I take it down to Engon Pro with the new features um, and create a low poly. Okay, so we'll turn the wireframe off. You'll notice that we're getting some loss of detail. Um, hang on, where's the... Not, every, not everything's showing up here. Um, that's okay um, you know I can mess around with this until I get something because this is just for baking right I can paste the detail to that um, if I look at my modifier stack, I can see I've got 20,000 there. I'm using UE5, so it's not really a big deal. Paste the detail there. Get rid of that guy. And this one, I could probably bring the detail right down. Some of these curved surfaces are pretty good at actually handling reasonably low detail. I didn't mirror these yet, did I? So it's okay. And then um, we'll turn our wireframes back on. And that's what we're working with. If we go back into edit mode, we can see the angons. And then something like that, if we turn on our scene statistics. Um, we could even like remesh it another way, but um, we turn on our scene statistics. 25,000 tries, that's fine. That is absolutely fine. It's um, not gonna cause any major um, issues with something like UE5, with something like, um, Unity. I might make my mesh like this and then I'd still be able to bake pretty good normals into that and then I'm down to like 5,000 so something like Unity I'd have a mesh like this um, and then bake my normals back in. Now if you look at what Angon Pro does if we turn off the data transfer modifier that's what we get we turn off the triangulate modifier, we turn them all off. We're back to our original mesh. Turn them back on. And if we open up our, you can see all of those surface imperfections in the Angon mesh at that level of detail. And then it's not too bad. So like something like this, there's actually, I've got an actually a uh, feature, which for some reason, what script am I looking at? 
Is this the one? Let's have a look. Here we go. Okay, so um, this is uh, one of the newer features. I think it's in the one that I just released. Um, but the vertex colors, yeah, I've no, I need to sort it out before I release it again. So I can just go and select this area and this area. I can deselect that and that and these and these, that, and that, and then what else is causing me problems? Just those really. I can expand the selection by one um, and then exclude faces from decimation. I probably want to include these in the decimation. So it's just these real funky areas. All right, and we go back into our decimation, bring our detail back up to like something like that. And as you can see, it's not quite working properly, <laughs> but you have to play around with it. But that gives you a little bit more control. Anyway, um, going back to plasticity, that's our our final mesh and I think it looks okay um, I don't know if I'm going to use it for the project I think I might make something a little bit more old-fashioned um, but I think it's looking pretty good uh, thanks a lot for watching everybody and I'll see you in the next one choose